All right, welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bacor, your host, as you know, and this is a special edition. I've been invited by General Motors Canada to come out to the beautiful campus of Durham College here in Whitby, Ontario, where um, uh, GM is putting on a specialized course. This is the first one now it's happening in Canada as they roll these out throughout North America on first responder training and how they deal with electrification from transportation and mobility that we're seeing grow and grow and grow on the roads. And it's an honor and a privilege to meet Joe McLean. He's the GM, works for GM. You're the Global Product Safety and Systems Engineer. Did I get that right, Joe? You did, Ken. Good it's to a, meet you. It was a great introduction. Glad to be here. Well, listen, thanks for doing what you do and, and again, for inviting me out. And, you know, uh, this is something actually that I took for granted. Like, I thought, well, isn't there first responder training and all this stuff all the time? And, you know, apparently there's not as much as we would think that is out there. But one thing that GM's trying to do in, you know, of course, the company's going all electric, you're all in an EV. So being able to help with that ecosystem to support those vehicles as they go out there. But maybe you can tell me a little bit first about what this training is about. Yeah, this training has been going on for about the last year. And we're committed to delivering this training hands-on, in person, to first and second responders all across North America. We've been to over 20 individual production sites. And when I say that metropolitan areas okay. like... Chicago, Illinois, New York City, Los Angeles, mm -hmm. San Francisco, Denver, Colorado, all these major metropolitan markets in which we are reaching out to several thousand first responders and showing them how committed General Motors is to the safety of the product that we put on the roads or into customers' hands, as well as the safety of the first responders. We want them to be aware of right. not only the precautions and the things that we've implemented as a company, to, you know, again, a commitment to safety, but also ensuring their safety and addressing or engaging with, interacting with these new electric vehicles. Exactly, and you know, those are the right areas to start with, those bigger, you know, more urban areas, because that's where we're seeing the highest percentage of EV adoption and growth occur. Um, obviously, the safety of everybody, both the, the occupants of a vehicle and the first responders are key, that's at the top of the list. But your training is, you, know, you, you, you talk a lot about GM vehicles, but it really is training that goes beyond really one specific, uh, one specific brand or make, correct? It does. So this training is meant to be as wide reaching as possible and share industry recommended practices, you know, through the Society of Automotive Engineers or International Standards Organization. There is a wealth of work, solid yeah. work, good work that has been done by General Motors over the past 100 plus years on electrification, and we want people to know that. Certainly General Motors is putting on this training, so we're gonna feature and spotlight you know, some of our awesome product like the Hummer EV, the mm -hmm. Cadillac Lyric. Yeah. You got the Chevy Bolt out here that has all the stickers and patches from all the different departments that we've trained. I saw it, it's pretty cool. Yeah. It's really cool, <laughs> but yes, we wanna show where the industry is yeah. and, and raise awareness on these industry level documents. And mm -hmm. you know, SAE J2990 is a great document. I'm hoping that your listeners or, or people that watch this are, become more familiar with that document. Okay, and you know the training itself. What what are kind of some of the main topics uh, that you guys cover throughout this half day sessions for yeah. these uh, folks? So these sessions are four hours in length. Uh -huh. We give them twice a day when we're at yeah. a venue, and we are delivering training on incident response, emergency rescue documents, battery hazards, and fire response, extrication. We go down and we talk about electric mm -hmm. vehicle basics down to the battery and really cell level. So we've got you know the evolution of battery cells from the Chevy Volt to now the Ultium product. Mm -hmm. And we have people touch and feel and see the battery disconnect units. And, and it's really amazing the depth that we're able to get people hit this hands-on training. You know, and that's pretty critical, Joe, because I sat through your initial presentation, which was great. And the amount of hands that went out, went up when you asked some EV related questions were very minimal, if any at times, which to me just shows that, that that knowledge still isn't out there, even for some basic stuff that you and I being, you know, in the EV industry now for a bit understand and take for granted. So I think, you know, having that basic knowledge, like, you know, even what to look for in a vehicle, right. Right? if it's an EV or not, that kind of stuff. So a lot of these steps that you talk about in responding to an incident, uh, I think we're pretty key. I mean, uh, I, so far the feedback has been very positive. It has been tremendously positive everywhere we've gone people have walked away with more knowledge than they had when we started and that's mm -hmm. the goal mm -hmm. right that's we want people to be aware of again where the industry is the maturity and continued maturation of the right. technology and the things that are evolving and, and what they might expect as we move towards an all-electric future 
Now, what are some of the misconceptions? I mean, uh, I know you, the training is ongoing now, but you know, you talked about dispelling some of those. What are some common misconceptions that you get from first responders dealing with EVs? It's basically more on non-experience in, in looking at any internet forums or mm -hmm. looking at things that yep. they, you know, spew fear. And, Internet's a rat hole. Don't go yeah, down it. Don't go down the internet <laughs> wormhole. Please exactly. don't. But I, I don't want to even give voice to some mm -hmm. of those misconceptions, yes. but they are safe. Yeah. They are designed with safety in mind. Yeah. The technology is considered all of the hazards and faults and conditions mm -hmm. that all the first responders are concerned about. So we talk and we showed you a video from a crash worthiness test from the Insurance Institute for Highway yeah. Safety. Mm -hmm. But please, I want people to know that those tests and those requirements put out by national governments around the world are very, very stringent. Mm -hmm. And we meet Fair. them before yeah. we put the product on the roads. But the, the main thing is that these vehicles are extremely safe. They're designed with safety in mind, and we're committed to the safety of the riding public as mm -hmm. well as all mm -hmm. the customers on road. Because I hear a lot of people say, well, you know, could first responders, could fire departments, can they throw water on EVs? Isn't that dangerous? I mean, it is, is that, not. Right? So, I mean, water and only water will put out a lithium ion battery fire. Mm -hmm. There is no known foam that will encapsulate the heat or cool down the exothermic reaction at the cell level except water. And what we talk about in the training is the use of copious amounts of water and, and trying to get mm -hmm. it into okay. the source of the heat. Try mm -hmm. to get it as close or onto the source of the, the thermal propagation that right. is there. Because that, that core thermal heat can be quite high, can it not? Like yes, really hard to it, put it out. can be. Well, it takes, again, direct, as close as you can get water mm -hmm. application mm -hmm. to the heat. If you're spraying on the hood or you're spraying on, you know, outside the vehicle, you're not doing any good. We make the recommendation to firefighters, and I love your watchers or listeners to, to hear this. We make the recommendation that if the vehicle is having a fire event, fill it up like a hot tub. Mm -hmm. There's no need to try to breach the battery pack or, you know, it's ridiculous to try to tip the vehicle on its side. You know, it's a heavy vehicle anyway, mm -hmm. but fill it up like a hot tub and the, the water will get through the load floor into right. where it needs to go. But right. if you're spraying the outside, you're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. exactly. And the other consideration that we talk about is the consideration of letting it burn, right? Mm -hmm. If you're in a resource constrained environment, you don't have access to hydration or water and you can control the exposures, then you can mm -hmm. do that. And it may be in the end result, the safest thing to do. Mm -hmm let the vehicle consume itself, right. and now you've got something that's marginally safer for the tow trucks or salvage yards to take you know, possession of, and you're not having an energized product that you know, may have just initially been put up, but mm -hmm. might reignite. How are you finding the reaction from students on this overall? Tremendously appreciative that we're mm -hmm. doing this, mm -hmm. and wondering why more people aren't doing it. Mm -hmm. Where are the other automakers? Right. Where can we get access to subject matter experts and folks that will give us the honest truth about the questions we have, the concerns that we have. That's the whole goal of this. Mm -hmm. These hands-on trainings are super important I mean, and, and you can't replicate that by a coursework online or, or something else. Sure. To that end, your listeners or watchers can go to gmevfirstrespondertraining.com where okay. we've got additional resources and other information and we will be posting you know, professionally produced clips and videos of the training that we've got, you know, hands-on that we've been doing for the past year, year nice. and a half nice. online. But again, hands-on training, you can't replicate the touch, the feel, the sense, and the engagement face-to-face -face with, with SMEs. No, absolutely. Now, you've been doing this for about a year. This is your first, I think, venture into Canada. It is. Here in the GTA. How do you see this program being rolled out over the next uh, 12 to 18 months, 24 months? So what we are looking to do, we're going to end next week with a final wrap-up at our General Motors Proving Ground in mm -hmm. Milford, Michigan. Yeah. And that will be the wrap for the current evolution of training. Mm -hmm. We will see what the reaction is to the online training yeah. and the continued education levels going on around not only the country of Canada but all across North America and really it's going to be for a global audience mm -hmm. uh, that GMEV sure. first responder training.com but we cannot commit to more in-person training right now mm -hmm. but we know the importance of it yeah excellent and any final wrap-up thoughts from your perspective electrification is here electrification is 
going to be the future. And again, whether it's battery electric vehicles or fuel cell electric vehicles or you know, whatever may come next, electrification is here and it's for a good reason. Our planet needs it and it's you know, an awesome way to move around in time and space. But we are committed to the safety of the product and we want folks that interact and engage with these vehicles on the roads or you know, on the waterways as they're coming and you know, all different modes of transportation modalities will be electrified in the not too distant future. But we want people to be confident in the performance of their duties. Well, it's a great thing that you guys are doing here and I'm preaching to the choir. So excellent, Joe, very much. Thanks Pleasure again. to meet you. Thank you very much for Thank having me much. out. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks. All right, I'm here with Dan. Hey, Dan, good to meet you. Good to meet you. Dan's one of the great. Dan's one of the attendees here at the first responding event, and uh, just wanted to get a quick soundbite from you. You've been in this for a couple of hours. You know the event. What's your feedback? What are you thinking of? What's going on here today? Well, technology is moving so fast. Yeah. Um, we're embracing eight percent of Ontario's uh, vehicles are now being sold mm -hmm. are electric vehicles. Yep. Um, they're on our highways and byways. Uh, Ontario is such a huge spot. Mm -hmm. uh, there are 444 departments across Ontario yeah. that will have to respond to vehicles. Mm -hmm. People aren't staying put anymore. They're traveling. COVID's over. They're back out. That's and, it. You know, uh, seeing the uh, highways and byways. Yeah, yeah. So this this training is very relevant at this point in time for first responders around the world, basically, very, right? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, very relevant uh, as far as trying to create uh, policies, procedures, yeah. um, uh, and the biggest thing is training, yeah. allowing the firefighters to understand that these are not conventional. Right. Uh, combustible vehicles that they've been trained on for 30 years. These are high-tech, rigid steel, and mm -hmm. uh, again, can cause a lot of pain and suffering yeah. if they're not treated with the respect that they need to be treated with. Absolutely. Good. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you're finding this training uh, relevant. I've been kind of just tagging on, watching everything that's going on. It's been very informative. So I'll let you uh, go okay. to the next session. Thank you very much Thanks for your time. time. Appreciate it. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you. Okay, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. I hope you enjoyed that. Really interesting what's going on in this EV landscape, and I applaud again GM's effort for being out front and thinking outside the box and being the innovator that they are. They really are folks. So thanks again for Joe and team for letting me come out. All my contact and all the closing information is coming up at the end credits. Uh, thanks to Patreon and all that kind of stuff. So check out, stay tuned and watch out for that. And I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, send them in to me. I'd love to get them answered for you. And again, everybody stay safe until the next episode. I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.